Hello and welcome to another Roblox tutorial. So in this video, I will show you how to make cooldowns for your tools, for any of your parts when they're touched, and for any other situation using debouncing in Roblox Studio. So, what exactly is debouncing? So debouncing a function ensures that it does not get called too frequently. So right now, I have a basic touched event connected to a function. If you don't know what this is, I have a tutorial all about events, and I will link that right now. And this script is parented to a part in the workspace. So if you run this right now, whenever you touch the part, it will print I was touched. And you can see the player character touches the part a lot in the bottom right. Like there, We're almost at 100, and that's pretty quick. So what I want to do is I want to add a 3 second cooldown to this touched event. So that what that basically means is I want this function to run, and it cannot run again until the 3 second cooldown has finished. So we can do this with debouncing. So the setup is actually pretty simple. First thing we're going to do is define a debounce variable, and this is going to be a boolean set to false. And it's going to be the default state. Basically this means that our function is ready to run. So we have to actually check if we can run this function. So we have to check if not debounce then, and we have to wrap this print statement with this if statement. So what this will do is basically check if not debounce. So if debounce is equal to false, not will make it true. And this will basically be the same thing as saying if true then, which will run this statement. But if debounce is equal to true, this statement will not run. And that's exactly what we want. So after we do this, we want to set debounce to true. So it's false. We check if it's false, and then we set it to true. So we've run this. This will just basically make our script, our little touch statement, run once. And once exactly. You can see in the bottom right, it does that. But that's not what we want. We want a cooldown. So the only other thing we have to do is just wait a specific amount of time. I'm just going to say three seconds and set debounce to false. So what this basically does is we first check if our cooldown, it's not like the cooldown isn't on, debounce is set to false, then we can run this. We just set debounce to true, so any other calls coming into, into this event will get rejected. It'll be like, oh, debounce is true, we can't run. And then it'll wait, and it'll set debounce to false, and the next function that triggers will see that debounce is false, and it'll run. So let's play this. And so you'll see, I step, it says I was touched once, and I go back, it says I was touched again. It only does it every three seconds. And if I don't touch it, nothing really happens. So, yeah, that's a basic, very, very basic way to do debounce. So this is a basic version of debounce, but there's a way to make it a little bit better and more simplistic, in my opinion. And it also helps to get rid of all of the, like, end clutter in your script. So what I'm going to do is instead of doing if not debounce then and then run whatever is inside the if statement, I'm going to do if debounce then return end. So this will basically do is prematurely return the function if debounce is true. So like what will happen is the function runs debounce is false, so this will not run. And then we'll set debounce is true, and let's say it runs again. It'll say, oh, debounce is false, then return. And this return statement will basically stop the function, so none of this will run. So if we play this, you will see it does exactly the same thing. So let's wait three seconds, we come back on, and the number goes up. So that works exactly as intended, and it's actually a lot simpler. And also, if you want to make your debounce a little bit more dynamic, you can replace this wait statement with any number of things. For example, you can wait for an event to occur, or you can wait till like the player clicks. You can do any of that. It's perfectly expandable, perfectly customizable. So that's a basic overview of cooldowns and debouncing in Roblox Studio. This is very useful, has a wide variety of uses. I use them a lot in tools and in... Um, part statements or touch things like these like for example when i have like a tool front and people like step on a platform to buy one of my tools 
ice debounce so it doesn't like spam too much and overall it's just super useful for everything so i hope you guys enjoy this tutorial this is a very in essential tool in roblox and make sure to comment any questions or suggestions down below i hope you guys have a nice day make sure to like and subscribe and goodbye